Okay, so chapter 9, a quick review, or as quick as it gets. So chapter 9 has to do with temperature, internal energy, phase change, calorimetry, and all that good stuff. So in part 1, we're going to talk about temperature. So temperature is connected with kinetic energy of particles that make up the object. So in this example right here, we have slowly moving particles. We add energy, and the particles speed up. How do you see it? Obviously, you cannot take binoculars or microscope and see those particles moving faster because they're too small. But what you will see if you take a thermometer and stick it into the substance, you will see that the temperature will rise. And the reason for it is that since the molecules are moving faster, they're going to excite the molecules inside the uh, thermometer if you're using the regular thermometer. So the faster the molecules move, the higher temperature we're talking about. If you see the temperature dropping down, that means that the molecules are moving slower. So temperature measures, or it's connected to, kinetic energy of particles that make up the subject. There are three uh, major widely used temperature scales. There is one used in the United States, um, created by Daniel Fahrenheit. Um, the other one is widely used in the rest of the world. It's Celsius. And there is also um, the scientific slash chemistry slash the physics, I would say, um, temperature scale created by Kelvin. And so therefore, we, told, we call them degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, and Kelvins, not degrees Kelvins, just regular Kelvins. All right, so any scale, specifically these two, Fahrenheit and Celsius, they were built around two specific points which were always consistent. There is a point at which water turns into ice, ice turns into water, and then there is a point where water turns into vapor, vapor can condense back into water. So between these two points, what Celsius did is he assigned the freezing point to zero, boiling point to 100, which was easy because there is exactly 100 degrees between those two points. So he just took the scale, divided it into 100 little fractions, and that was the scale for Celsius. But Celsius was actually after Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit was the first guy who created a very, very precise thermometer, and so he created his own scale. And instead of just going for 100 steps, 100 degrees between those two points, he wanted to go for 180 to, to make a more precise scale. Or maybe he associated it with, with an open angle because it's one straight line, which is an open angle of 180 degrees. Not only did he do this, 180, he also figured out, can I make water freeze at a lower temperature? And he did. He added salt to it. And so because of adding salt, that mixture of water and salt that was like half and half, the temperature at which normal unsalted water froze on his scale was 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so because, because there is a 32 degrees Fahrenheit to begin with, another 180 degrees Fahrenheit steps to the boiling point, and so the boiling point was 212 Fahrenheit. So how do we go from Fahrenheit to Celsius? How do we, do we go from Europe to America or from America to Europe? So if we're going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we're going home. Since we're going home, we have the right order of operation. We will multiply by 1.8 and then we will add 32. So let's say we have 20 degrees Celsius. We need to turn them into Fahrenheit. We'll take 20, multiply by 1.8 and add 32 to it. 20 times 1.8 is 36 plus 32 gives us 68 Fahrenheit. Celsius is always less than Fahrenheit. If we're going Fahrenheit to Celsius, we're backing up. So backing up is the reverse order of operation. We will subtract first, and then we will divide by 1.8. So let's say I have a negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and I need to turn it into Celsius. I will subtract 32, divide by 1.8, and it will actually, that's the only time when we have the same um, like if I had two thermometers, one of them was showing Fahrenheit and one of them was showing Celsius, they would, the only place where they would agree would be negative 40 degrees. Negative 40 Celsius and negative 40 Fahrenheit is the same, just happens that, that way. All right, Kelvin. Kelvin created his, uh, what is called absolute zero, theoretically. He figured what if we take all the energy out, then 
you can see different graphs. Sometimes it's P versus T, sometimes it's V versus T. So if you removed all the energy, the object would basically have no energy and those, those molecules would be so stuck together that volume would practically be zero. And that would happen theoretically at negative 273 degrees or 0.15 degrees Celsius. So to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would, you would so Celsius, zero Celsius, is going to be 273 Kelvins. And then if you have Kelvins, and to go to Celsius, you will subtract. So zero Kelvins is negative 273.15. If you have zero Celsius, that would be 273.15 Kelvins. So plus, if you go from Celsius to Kelvin, you add. If you go from Kelvins to Celsius, you subtract 273. All right, now converting change in temperature. What if I have the change in temperature? The change in temperature in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, remember, is more precise. To each step in Fahrenheit, there is 1.8 because it's 180 versus 100. So if I have the change in Fahrenheit, I would multiply it to get the change in Celsius. If I have the change in Celsius, I would divide it by 1.8. If I have the change in Celsius and I want to know what the change in, in Kelvin says, it's the same. So, for example, if my temperature changed by 72 degrees Fahrenheit, let's say it was 10 and now it's 82, and I need to know what the change in temperature was for Celsius. I take 72 as my change, not 72 Fahrenheit, it's the change from, again, from 10 to 82. So 72 divided by 1.8 is 40 degrees Celsius. So the steps, there's 40 steps to each 72 on Fahrenheit. Now, if I have the change in temperature in Celsius, it's going to be 20 times 1.8, and that would be 36 degrees in Fahrenheit. What would be the change in temperature in Kelvins for this case? It would be 20. What would 72 degrees Fahrenheit change correspond to the change in Kelvins? The same as Celsius. So this, the change in temperature for, in Celsius equals the change in temperature in Kelvins.